So another question that kind of follows from this, if it's not a state of definite energy, what will I get if I measure the, the energy of this particle? Well, with a probabilistic interpretation of quantum mechanics, we have to think about what this superposition really means. We're saying that we have a wave function that describes this particle, and it has a superposition of allowed or, or eigenfunctions. Each of those, these things have a definite energy, omega n times h bar. And by saying that there's a superposition, we're saying that this particle is in a cocktail of possible states, and at any instant in time, I don't know which of those states the particle's in. I know that it has some probability of being in each of these things. What probability will it have? Well, it has the probability cn squared of having a particular energy eigenvalue, e sub n. So if I were to go and measure this particle's energy, I, don't, I can't tell you what value you would get. You could get a range of possible values given by all the ranges of values of the allowed energy uh, eigenstates uh, for this particle in a box. And if you were to repeat measuring the energy for a, a, an ensemble of 10,000 of such superposition states, what you would find is you might have uh, some distribution that looks like this. And on any one trial, I could not predict for you what you'll see. But the amplitudes of these bins of the histogram here, so for each EN, you might get a thousand particles that end up in that bin, or here might be E n plus 2, and so on. I can predict for you what you would see after the fact. You would see a certain fraction of them given by C n squared uh, coming up in that bin, but I would not be able to predict for you what the one specific measurement would come out to be. That's because this, this superposition state is like saying, I don't know which particular uh, I can state the particle happens to be in at this moment in time. I can tell you that there's a sum of possibilities, and I can tell you after the fact that if you measured one particular value, that what the probability of finding that value was, but I will not, it's not predictive, it's not deterministic. Um, it's, it's predictive of what happens in the average. So quantum mechanics will allow us to calculate things like the average energy eigenvalue, that again equals energy times psi, psi star. Or I can predict for you the RMS. I can predict a lot of things after the fact, um, what you should see for an ensemble, but you can't predict what you would see in one particular measurement. There's another interesting thing here um, about this, and that is that uh, I'm speaking of ensembles. I'm always speaking of if I prepare a particle in this state, this superposition, and I go and measure the, the particle exactly prepared like this, and then I throw that particle away. I don't use it anymore. I, get, I prepare another experiment, and I come back and measure the, the ensemble state again. But what if I did something slightly different? What if I tried measuring the same particle over and over again? Well, this co corresponds to something you might have heard about in, in popular uh, books or press. It's referred to as collapsing of the wave function. Before I measure this particle, there is a superposition of allowed eigenstates. That's at least how we said this, part of this wave function was prepared. And I'm saying I don't know which eigenstate the, the particle happens to be in. But once I've made one measurement of energy,
and I get a value en. Well, now I know what particular wave function it's in, in amongst this superposition. It's not just that it has a, a series of allowed wave functions. It's in a particular one. So that if I were to keep working with the second, this same particle over and over again, what would, it be, what would I see? Well, the second time I try to measure its energy, I would still get back the same value, En, with 100% probability. If I measure it a third time, again, with 100% probability, get the same value, En. That's because I've already determined which of these uh, particular eigenvalues within this cocktail that this particle happened to be in. So you can view this wave function in one of a couple different ways. Either, in the first case, it's the the cocktail of, of energies possessed by an ensemble of particles, or it's the cocktail of po possibilities that any one particle can occupy before you go and choose to measure it. But after you've chosen, chosen to measure it, it's well determined. It's in that particular n eigenstate. So sometimes people have talked about uh, collapsing of the wave function by giving the example of Schrodinger's cat. That's Schrodinger's cap. Um, the premise here is if I close the lid on this box and I cannot look inside, I couldn't tell you if the cat was alive or dead. So I have to give it a probability of being alive plus a probability of being dead. That's once the lid's closed. But suppose in this particular uh, hypothetical experiment, the act of opening a lid would release a little cyanide tablet, and it would kill the cat. Well, the wave function would be collapsed. It would indeed be dead. Now, I couldn't tell you for sure that the cat was alive or dead before I opened the lid, but I know that the act of, of making the measurement is going to achieve a certain result for the cat, and it's going to stay that way. So before the, the lid is opened, you can either view it as it's not alive it's because I haven't measured it to be alive, or I can view it as not being dead because I haven't measured it to be dead. But after I open the lid, it will be a dead cat.